So good morning from the beautiful Black Hills of South Dakota. I'm in Custer State Park right now and have just fallen in love with this landscape. I was a little delayed in my commute to get here, but um, no complaints. So what I'm trying to do here is I've got the telephoto and I'm honing in on parts of this beautiful landscape and the greens of the, of the grasses are just so brilliant. So what I like to see is the sun hitting those grasses and you get all kinds of textures and tones and patterns and it's just a lovely thing to see. Um, so that brings me to the topic of this video. So the topic today is exposure compensation. Now I did a video a while back about it and what the, you know, the premise of that video was um, to try to explain why using automatic exposure mode is not really a good way to use your camera if you want correct exposure. So I want to take that a little further um, because there's a little bit of confusion going on with the term exposure compensation um, because I used that term in reference to manual mode. Let's be clear, exposure compensation can be used in manual mode as well as aperture priority and shutter speed priority. So let me explain that a little bit better. Let's start at the beginning. You first must understand the camera's meter. It measures reflective light. So your camera is a measuring tool. And like any other measuring tool, it needs a reference point. That reference point can be seen when you're looking through the viewfinder and you can see the meter's scale. In the middle, where it says zero, that is the reference point, and that's oftentimes referred to as middle gray, but we also call that standard exposure. Now notice that on your camera's meter, that scale that you see in the viewfinder, notice the numbers to the right and to the left of that middle point. So the numbers to the right are when you add light to the exposure, so you're overexposing above standard exposure. The numbers to the left are subtracting light, so you are underexposing um, below the standard exposure. One way to really understand how that camera meter works or how standard exposure works is to put your camera into automatic mode. When you put it in automatic mode, it doesn't matter where you point your camera. It could be a very bright scene or it could be a very dark scene. It doesn't matter. The camera is always going to expose down the middle. Okay, so once you know that, you know that that standard exposure is not going to be the correct exposure that you want all the time. In fact, most of the time, it's not going to be a correct exposure for you. So with that in mind, exposure compensation can be defined as you controlling the exposure so that you can add light or subtract light from the standard exposure setting. So as an example, if I want to capture these brilliant greens in these hills, unfortunately the clouds are covering the sun so I can't do that right now, but if the sun was hitting those hills, I would want to bring out that brilliancy by overexposing slightly right to the right of that reference point. All right, so I found that about two thirds of a stop is about enough light to add to that. So some of the scenes that I capture in the Everglades, those high key shots where the water in the sky kind of become one brilliant white background, those are overexposed by about one and a third, one and two thirds, sometimes two stops above standard exposure. Now, I always photograph in manual mode not aperture priority, not shutter speed priority. And so this is where the confusion about exposure compensation comes in because I've even seen uh, videos where photographers are telling you that you can't use exposure compensation in manual mode. Now that refers to the exposure compensation button 
that you need to use when you are in aperture or shutter speed priority. When you are in manual mode, that exposure compensation button is no longer used. However, when you are in manual mode, you do use exposure compensation because you are going to adjust your exposure above or below standard exposure accordingly. So when I'm shooting these hills and I want to bring out those brilliant greens, I know I need to overexpose the scene. That's exposure compensation and I'm in manual mode doing that. Now, let's talk about aperture priority and shutter speed priority for a moment. So you know that your camera has that dedicated button for exposure compensation. If your camera has two dials, um, when you're in one of those priority modes, one of those dials are going to be your exposure compensation dial. The thing you need to really understand about aperture priority or shutter speed priority is that when you're in one of those modes, you are handing control over to your camera. You're telling your camera to use standard exposure. If you put it in aperture priority, set your aperture, and take a shot and do nothing else, you are going to be exposing the scene down the middle at, at that reference point. So you're not overexposing, you're not underexposing. You're allowing the camera to do the exposure for you. So exposure compensation button or dial is what allows you to override your camera's standard exposure. You're going to decide to add light or subtract light. All right, so let's say you have a scene that you want to overexpose. How much light should you add to that scene? Um, so a lot of times it really is trial and error, but you have some very useful tools to help you make the right decision before you even take the shot. And with these modern digital cameras, we have a very, I think, a very powerful tool in live view specifically the histogram. Now it used to be you would take a shot, then you would review the histogram and then adjust your exposure. But now you can see the histogram as you are setting up for the shot. I can look through the viewfinder and I can see the histogram. Now I do have a video about that, so I'm not gonna go into detail about histograms. Now if I'm shooting a really, really bright scene like water and sky as negative space, um, you know, most of the pixels are going to be pushed to the right. That means that they're going to be very, very bright. Um, that the histogram isn't going to be as useful. That's where I, you know, I, you can call it cheating, but I rely on the live view itself where I can actually see the scene as it's being exposed. Now, remember, as you're looking through the viewfinder, if you have an electronic viewfinder, you can adjust your exposure and you can see it brightening as you add light. It's not gonna look exactly the way your raw file is going to look, but it's pretty darn close. To summarize, so what we're talking about, taking control over your camera's exposure. So exposure compensation is simply exposing above or below the reference point or standard exposure. You can do it in manual mode, you can do it in aperture priority, you can do it in shutter speed priority. So whatever it is you're photographing, get the correct exposure, not the standard exposure, the correct exposure. Underexpose, overexpose accordingly. Take creative and technical control over your photography.